Good morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Welcome. I'm so glad you're all here and online and wherever you are joining in today at St. Paul's United Church in Oakville, Ontario. We watched the sun rise, or maybe you slept in, but the sun rose this morning on Treaty 14 lands. It has risen here from time immemorial on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Atawandaron, and the Métis. Now we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation as the stewards here who watch that sunrise with such a long history and a long memory of their time and care for this land. And we learn from them. Now this morning is a special morning for us too as the sun rises, the sun has risen, and we are a church learning and growing together in justice, seeking justice, in affirming all, and affirming each person as a beloved child of God, and with seeking justice in this community, which as my feeling of Easter and my understandings have grown, this is about justice rolling out like a stream. And so morning has broken, spring is awakening, and as it awakens for us far and wide, whether you're here in this space or online, whether you're down south or far, west, east, north, south, wherever you are, um, spring is awakening, Easter is awakening, and we are all in spirit joined together because God knows no boundaries. So our rising faith today is shown in this candle. And as it sparkles to life, we remember Christ who is killed is alive. The spirit of life is now a light in the world and it brings peace to all of you. So let's not get up, but turn around and wave. Make sure the camera can see you wave and wish each other the peace of Christ. And before the prayer. Let's do it before the prayer. Isn't that fun, folks? Look at the number of folks who are here. Thank you for wearing your masks diligently. That matters so much. But look at all the folks who are here and the kids. And we have Sunday school this morning. This is wonderful. Yeah, doesn't it feel good? Now we're going to begin with our story. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and told them, The rabbi has been taken from the tomb. We don't know where they have put Jesus. At that, Peter and the other disciple started toward the tomb. They were running side by side, but then the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He didn't enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the linen wrappings lying on the ground. Then Simon Peter arrived and entered the tomb. He observed the linen wrappings on the ground and saw the piece of cloth that had covered Jesus' head, lying not with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who had arrived first at the tomb went in. He saw and believed, and yet they didn't understand the scripture that Jesus was to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. The Word of God. Let's pray. Rising God, on this emerging Easter morning, we come with the memory of a promise and a miracle we can scarcely hope for. We come in hope of new life, new life in cynical or fearful minds, new life in hurting people, new life on this struggling planet. Renew us, O oh God. Refresh us in this promise kept, this miracle that we see and make seen around us. Alleluia, we sing. 
and we rise with praise. Amen. And now our first hymn is in the big red Voices United hymn books, number 122. Oh, 125. 152. 155. <laughs> and we should sing with some laughter in our voice. This is the biggest, best one. So here we go. Good morning. My name is Judy Deveni. Our second scripture reading this morning continues the Easter story from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. This reading is from the Inclusive Bible. Meanwhile, Mary stood weeping beside the tomb. Even as she wept, she stooped to peer inside, and there she saw two angels in dazzling robes. One was seated at the head and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had lain. They asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She answered them, Because they have taken away my rabbi, and I don't know where they have put the body. No sooner had she said this than she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. He asked her, Why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? She supposed it was the gardener, so she said, Please, if you're the one who carried Jesus away, tell me where you laid the body, and I will take it away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus then said, don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to Abba God. 
Rather, go to the sisters and brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to, the, to my Abba and to your Abba, my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to the disciples. I have seen the teacher, she announced. Then she reported what the Savior had said to her. May God grant us understanding of our sacred text. Amen. Christ is risen. Try when it's been a long time. Um, so I say Christ is risen, and you say Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Amen. Let's pray. May the words from my lips and the meditations of my heart be guided by your spirit and be words of wisdom for this day. Amen. You may have noticed that Easter falls fairly late this year, which suits our weather because it feels like spring is a little late as well. Easter can occur any Sunday between March 22nd and April 25th. Do you know why the date we celebrate Easter varies from year to year? Anybody know? The moon, yes. Easter's exact date depends on the moon. It is set to coincide with the first Sunday after the Paschal full moon, or the first full moon after the vernal equinox, or the first full moon after March 21st, the first day of spring. Did you notice the full moon last night? Yeah. April's full moon is sometimes called the pink moon, which has actually nothing to do with the color of the moon. It is named after the early springtime blooms of a wildflower called creeping phlox or moss phlox. Maybe you've seen some of that lately. There has been talk of changing the date of Easter so that it will land on the same Sunday every year. But I have to say that I would be against this. It does make Easter more convenient, but Easter usually coincides with Passover. In our gospel stories, Jesus celebrates Passover with his disciples before he is arrested and put to death. The celebration of Passover by the Jewish faith and Easter by the Christian faith often coincide because we both follow the moon which provides a meaningful connection to the story and to our Jewish siblings. Also, I feel it makes sense for Easter to follow the rising of the full moon, following the rhythm of creation. Many of us don't connect with the rhythms of the earth anymore. Our culture tends to be set against nature more than working in harmony with it. Most of us don't know when there is a full moon. In our region, it's difficult to follow the stars because we can't see them all the time. We don't know where certain fruit foods grow because all varieties are available in the grocery store all the time. And we rely on weather apps to tell us what it's like outside rather than just walking out and experiencing it. Most of us know, though, when spring is in the air. We've made it through winter, cold weather, snow and ice, bulky winter jackets and heavy boots. Even for those who love winter, there is something about opening the door and hearing the birds again, watching the squirrels rebuild their nests, shedding that warm clothing and feeling the warmth of the day on our bodies. And with spring comes Easter. And spring and Easter just seem to come together naturally. New life from the ground, new life in the air and all around us, new life from the tomb. Every year this new life looks a little different from the year before, just as the risen Christ was different. In fact, he seemed to be unrecognizable. Judy read the story today of Mary of Magdala, who saw Jesus but didn't know it was him. She thought he was the gardener and asked him if he knew where they had taken her teacher's body. 
Now, it's possible her eyes were full of tears or the sun was right behind Jesus and that's why she didn't know him. But we also get this phenomenon later when the other apostles are in a boat and see Jesus on the shore and don't know it's him. And in another gospel, in the gospel of Luke, we have two people who encounter Jesus on the road and don't know him. When Mary saw this person outside the tomb, she assumed him to be the gardener. Why the gardener? What was it about this person Mary saw that made her think he was a gardener? Was there a garden outside the tomb? Was he dressed like a gardener? I'm not sure what a gardener in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago would have worn, but maybe an apron, gloves, a hat as protection from the sun. Maybe his hands and clothes were dirty, like he had been in the dirt. Or maybe there was something about him that suggested new life. Green buds on the trees, budding flowers, the song of the birds, a gentle rain. Something about him that was spring-like, a freshness, a warmth, a newness, a sense of hope. Some think that the author of this gospel wanted to tie the risen Christ to the Garden of Eden, the beginning of creation, a time when humanity was dispelled from the garden and then we're now being invited back into the garden, back into this intimate relationship with God and the earth, with all of God's creation. The Gospel of John is full of symbolism. And this idea of Christ being connected to this first garden of creation connects with the opening lines of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So who was this person? Mary recognized him as her teacher. Rabboni, she exclaims. The author of the Gospel of John sees him as a gardener and calls him the Word, as well as bread of life, light of the world, and the good shepherd. There are some who will call the man of the Gospels, the man who died, Jesus, but call the one who left the tomb, the Christ. They make a distinction between Jesus, the man who lived among other people, eating, drinking, sleeping, walking, doing the things that people do, and the Christ, who after facing death and returning, was much more. He still had meals with his friends, but did he feel hunger? He still walked with others, but would disappear suddenly. He still had the wounds from the cross, but did not suffer from them. Christians for eons have tried to make sense of this mystery. Some would say he was always a spirit, while others believed he was human and then became God. The view that became standard or orthodox for Christians was a compromise. Jesus is 100% human and 100% divine. Christ is a new creation and an old one. Christ came to this world 2,000 years ago as one of us and has always been here and always will be. The The contradictions confuse and baffle, but also enhance the mystery of this divine presence, of this cosmic Christ. And our faith allows for that. It's not about either or. It's not one or the other. It's not about being right or wrong. It's both and. It's one and the other. It's about truths held differently, but still the truth. This Easter, let's join Jesus in the garden. Let's put on our aprons, our gloves, and our hats, Put our hands in the soil and celebrate the life that comes from the earth. 
Or if you're not much of a gardener, maybe get out your umbrella and galoshes and take a walk in the rain and jump into a puddle and celebrate the life the rain nourishes. And if that's not you either, sing a song with the birds, sit and watch the squirrels or the changing color of the sky. Eventually, bite into a fresh Ontario strawberry, make a rhubarb pie, celebrate this new life all around us. You could also pick up your Bible and read the resurrection stories. Read about the disbelief, the joy, and the hope that came from seeing their friend and teacher again. Read about the Christ that was in the beginning, is now, and always will be. Read the peace that comes with knowing death is never the end. And give thanks for new life all around us and within us. And you can do that all year round. Christ is risen. Christ is risen thanks be to God. Amen. So today is Easter, and we are celebrating Earth Day. Earth Day is April 22nd every year, and we try to uh, recognize it the Sunday before. So today is Easter and Earth Day. So today we're going to sing the next hymn is, This is God's Wondrous World. It's number 296 in that red hymn book. Good morning, St. Paul's. I am Jeff Lafferette. I am Jay Smith. And we are the hoppy halves of uh, Deborah and Carolyn, which is pretty impressive because Catherine's sitting right there, and I will often say Catherine and Miss Carolyn all together, so this is good. I also want to recognize the struggle for those of you who wear hearing aids. Taking off the mask and trying to make it look graceful when your hearing aid doesn't go flying off, I'm getting better. So uh, it's wonderful to see everybody. Uh, here it today. Is, and it's Easter, we can tell, because Judy hopped her way in. Oh, very good. We used to think that Harold was her only crutch, and uh, but she has her own now, so this is nice. We, uh, <laughs> we also want to say thank you to all of you uh, for coming and those of you online. 
Um, and a very big thank you for exceeding the flower donation. I will say that, you know, our church has a lot of unsung heroes, and one of them is uh, Carol Ann, who, you know, puts out requests and sets us up for flowers every week. So she put out a, an ask and thought maybe we'd get a couple, given, you know, the pandemic. Well, this is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm wondering if we can just maybe just give a quick hand to Carol Ann and everyone who donated. That's really nice. Uh, afterwards, Jeff and I are selling flowers cheap. We are. And we will also be editing the video so it looks like that when we come up, the applause matches that. Yeah. All right, we got announcements. Yeah. Uh, Deborah is leading a book study called Spiritual Migration by B Brian McLaren. You have to order the book by May 1st. Uh, next week is Anniversary Sunday. It is. Yep. Every it, year, same time. I know. I know. Unlike Easter. Uh, and then there's going to be snacks and drinks on the lawn. Yeah. 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 As yeah, long that's as it's clap worthy. Not, as long as it's not, you know, raining. Yeah. Uh, Vibis. Vibis. Vibis is coming up, or as the, uh, you know, lamer people say, VBS. But uh, the hip kids say Vibis. And they're looking for volunteers. They need four people between 15 and 30, and I think they put that down there so we don't show up. Oh, yes. Yes. But by maturity, you and I would uh, qualify. Yes. Next um, announcement. <laughs> softball. <laughs> softball. So I, I want to recognize that everybody who's getting in shape for softball, and I will recognize <laughs> Which that. shape? Well, I am a shape. And uh, I will say that softball season is coming upon us. So if you're interested, please let us know. Judy is already uh, working on her legs, so uh, she should be ready by June. We got this. Yeah. Uh, please let Ron or I know uh, if you're interested in playing baseball, and uh, uh, that's going to be starting up. And um, one last thing. You know, Jay, I just want to recognize that uh, we have been begging for chocolate all season, Yeah. right? Yep. And it had been actually quite embarrassing how little chocolate we got. But just because you know I love you, Jay, here's a chocolate for you. Oh, thank you. Happy Easter. I didn't just find that in the bathroom. So, no, I totally did. I totally did. Anyways, I, I hope everybody is doing well. It's great to see you all, and uh, be safe and be kind. Take care, St. Paul's. Speaking of taking things off and putting things on. I gotta tell you, if you applaud, they're gonna expect it every week. Okay. Um, just a couple of notes. Um, VBS registration should open this week, um, and that's for children, I think it's age three, it's, so it's like preschool to grade five, six. And um, seven and up, we will be hoping that you sign up to be volunteers. So that registration should open this week. The four people between 15 and 30 are not volunteers. Those are the ones we're actually hiring, who will work eight weeks during the summers, two of those weeks here, and then other weeks um, at other churches. So we're hoping people will apply by April 30th. So um, it's a great opportunity for people to get, for young people to be paid and, uh, and actually get some good experience working with children. Um, in the Brian McLaren book, it's called Spiritual Migration. Look it up. It's a great book about our times, kind of the church in our times and how um, we need to, again, it's about new life, like new life in the church and how we find that new life and move forward from what we used to be, right? So it's a, it's a great book. Even if you can't come to the book study, it's a great book to pick up and have a read. Um, this is usually our offering time. We aren't at that point where we're passing the plate around yet. The, past, the plates are still in the narthex on the table back there, if you want to put it back there. Um, and just another big thank you to all those who continue to give to this ministry and our mission and um, have supported us, especially throughout this pandemic time. I think that's all I have to say. <clears throat> uh, we're now going to pray. And Thea shared in Jonah offered to do our prayer today. And you may know she's still in BC, so she sent a video. 
She's going to be home soon, though, and she's looking forward to seeing us. In the video, there is a point where a plane is flying overhead, <laughs> and, there, and she misses one line from the Lord's Prayer. So just uh, take, it, take it in <laughs> and pray, pray with Thea as she offers her words. Hey, St. Paul's. Um, so as many of you probably know, um, I am in Vancouver, BC, uh, at uh, UBC. And I'm doing the prayers of the people this week. So I thought I would give you a view of the Pacific Ocean. It's not <laughs> there, it's focusing. Um, and also let you know that I will be back in Ontario for the service on May 7th. So I'm excited for that. Now, let us pray on hopefully a beautiful Easter out there with the coming of spring. Heavenly Parent, uh, thank you for this opportunity we have to continue gathering online to celebrate you and the son that uh, was sacrificed for us. More importantly, let us celebrate the coming of spring as we're simultaneously celebrating Earth Day and the beauty and majesty of the world that we get to live in. At the same time, I also pray for the continued fight to protect this planet, especially as we see ongoing developmental projects and the need to continue fighting for the protection of the planet for ourselves and for animals. Um, I also pray for ongoing conflict, including and beyond the violence in Ukraine, um, as well as for out here in BC and beyond the ongoing uh, drug poisoning crisis and the six-year uh, anniversary of BC declaring a drug overdose crisis, um, and praying that we continue to in your name protect those who are most vulnerable because that is why you sent your son and that is what we are called to do as christians and as people now i invite you all to join me in saying the prayer talk to us eternal spirit earth maker pain bearer life giver source of all that is and that shall be. Father and mother, parent of us all, loving God, in whom is heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I did miss a line in the prayer. I only wrote down <laughs> half of it, so apologies for that. Um, but I am excited to be back with all of you very soon. And I will end with the view of the ocean. Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to the Name Your Favorite Easter Idol Show. Our contestants only got three questions to help them guess their, the name of their favorite idol. Are you ready to meet our contestants? Before our contestants come out, I will introduce you the four great Easter idols. Nobody knows for sure when they arrived on the scene, but the legend of the Easter Bunny brings eggs appears to have been brought to North America by settlers from Germany. The German traditions of the Easter Bunny, or Osler Haars, migrated to America in the 1700s, accompanying by German immigrants, many of whom settled in Pennsylvania. The rabbit, or hare, was a symbol of abundant new life in ancient times, and reminds us of the spring and new life. Please welcome the Easter Bunny! Although eggs in general were a traditional symbol of fertility and rebirth in Christianity, for the celebration of Eastertide, Easter eggs symbolized the empty tomb of Jesus. 
from which Jesus was resurrected. Please welcome the Easter egg. Our third idol is a butterfly. Its whole life cycle is meant to symbolize the life of Jesus Christ. The first stage is the caterpillar, which stands for his life on earth. The second phase begins from the cocoon stage, portraying the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. The third and final stage is the butterfly, representing his raising from the dead and in a glorified body and peace. Please welcome the butterfly! Our fourth idol has been around from the very beginning of all this Easter celebration. He may be why we celebrate Easter, but he isn't the idol he used to be. Please welcome Jesus! I think we are ready for our first contestant. Let's bring them in. Welcome contestant. As you know, you only get three questions to guess your favorite Easter idol. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Then let's begin Easter Idol. Idol number one, are you a good listener? Idol number one, would you... Hold up by myself. Not a miss my finger. Okay. Idol number one, would you say you're always smiling? Yes. When you got great teeth, you stop. When you got great teeth, you stop. Can I? Idol number one, if I saw you, would I sit, just want to hold you and feel safe? Oh, yes. Idol number one, are you Jesus? No, that's not me. Aww. Hmm, idol number two, are you strong on the outside but soft in the inside? It sounds like you have been reading my diary. <laughs> idol number two, would you say you're a symbol of new life? You bet. And that new life is a surprise. Hidden inside of what looks lifeless is, is new life just cracking to get out. Now that was three questions. Are you ready to guess? Yes. Idol number two, are you Jesus? No, sorry. You were on a roll too. Okay. Idol number three, at one time in your life, did people think you were dead? Yes, it happens all the time. Idol number three, and then you were wrapped in tight and placed in a dark, small space? Yes, it's like I disappear. Idol number three, do you then appear all changed and new? Yes, and even those who knew me before I got wrapped up don't recognize me. Idol number three, are you Jesus? Oh no, and I thought you knew exactly who I was. Well, contestant, you only have one idol left to guess. I hope you have better luck. Idol number four, are you a good listener? Yes, I do that very well. And would you say that you are a symbol of new life? I would say I am the way and the new life. And finally, idol, idol number four, can we see transformation in you? I hope you see it in me so that you can see it in you. I've been wrong before, but idol number four, are you Jesus? Yes, you have looked for me and found me.
Well done, contestant. You may now turn around and see your Easter idol. Can I guess that Jesus is your favorite? To tell you the truth, he is my favorite at Easter and all year long. These other Easter idols disappear as soon as Easter is over, but Jesus is always here. Wow, <laughs> what a Sunday. We have not had a Sunday like this in more than two years. Um, Jeff was telling me how many people are here and we double the number that we would normally have. We said 71 was the number. So that's impressive. It's amazing to have everyone here. Amazing to have our children here and sharing their gifts with us here and on the screen. And thanks to Bev for directing that again. Yes, and, uh, and Tracy for leading Sunday School. So it's wonderful to have all of you here and everybody, of course, at home watching and engaging with us as well. Um, we are not going to turn on Zoom coffee hour after church. Uh, that's partly because we are so busy in this space right now. It'll be the same for next Sunday. So um, we're, we're trying to evaluate how that's going to move forward. So uh, if you want to talk to me about that, uh, come and talk to me, and we'll figure out something. But today there will be no um, Zoom on coffee hour on Zoom. And don't forget to bring home your flowers. We're really not selling them. So um, please take, home your, take your flowers home with you and enjoy them at home. Rise to blessing, rise to gratitude, rise to potential, rise to goodness, rise to generosity. Rise to appreciation, rise to hopefulness, and rise to new life. Rise like Jesus did, for God has blessed you with a day too beautiful to miss. Amen.